in his chair mm -hmm. in front of all these like uh, greenery and leaf flowers, like representing uh, official flower of like Chicago, and then you know from where he's from in Hawaii and whatnot. Yeah. It's it's a very interesting image, you know, for striking striking for presidential portrait, but it's abstract too because of all these leaves. So I send Justin this image of the the portrait. At the exact same moment, I go send him the joke gif I was preparing. He sends me that we send each other the same gif. The same joke. Of, oh, that's great. Of Obama, or excuse me, of Homer Simpson fading into oh, the leaves. In the leaves, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Same ties, that exe. Same ties. It, it was like, but as well as like, like, I click send, and as I click send, his pops up, mine pops up above his and mine, and it realizes we did this at the same time, and then it's, you just see both the images there. I'm like, oh god, this is why we had to go, we had to, we had to move across one of us across the other country, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Happy Monday! Oh my goodness. Two seconds. Sure. Today is February 12th of 2018. Uh, For those who don't possess devices that show you what day it is. <laughs> Uh, I used to love how every web page, you know, they'd put the clock function on the side and the, and the date, you know, the little calendar, you know, like, yeah. like it's a WordPress thing. You go to WordPress sites like this is today's day. Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> I'm here on my computer. I uh, have had. Uh, pretty much every service and brand I've ever seen on the planet remind me that it's Valentine's Day. This, do you guys know it's Valentine's Day is coming up? Val it's going to be Valentine's Day. You know so, uh, Day, yeah. Guys. Isn't that don't, weird? Don't it's, 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 be no. left out. Pro Flowers <laughs> and Sherry's Berries have teamed up for a new cherry box of berry flowers. <laughs> What's well, like Movie Pass? T minus two days until Valentine's Day. Um. Well, I get extended stay America. Andrew Maine, will you be our Valentine? No. Oh, God. It's creepy and weird. Weird corporate entity, publicity marketing department. Oh. I'm spoken for. And then Domino's tells me like every two weeks about this coupon that they've got. Like it's some big shit. I know I can get two pizzas for $6 each, dude. <laughs> normal price <laughs> but they're like well, why don't you <laughs> oh my goodness uh well welcome hello everybody we're about to start weird things in a few minutes Once Brian gets back from getting a soda um uh oh uh on the weekends so we did it last we did it last night we'll do it on Sunday night uh this weekend also uh we're doing the rewinds where we go back and watch um uh, old episodes of the podcast and stuff we watch them live and we can all chat together in, in the chat room uh and so there's actually a twitter account for that stream now so uh because it's not always a set time right so uh uh i i pushing it out there so uh if you're on twitter uh, twitter.com slash rewind c-u-l-t rewind cult uh, can you do mm -hmm. rewinds of those episodes too rewinds of the rewinds yeah, well, they they're multiple episodes, so it would be like a four or five hour stream being re-encoded. I mean, it would be interesting to say the least. It would be very meta. Yeah, <laughs> April Fool's is going to be a rewind of a rewind. <laughs> oh. uh, but so that's happening on the weekends, and if you want uh, updates, follow at Rewind Cult on it. I was surprised that that was still available. Uh, Rewind Cult, see you last Tuesday. Strike It Rich asks, or Strike, it Rich, Strike It Rich asks, what about fast forwards? Well, I don't think we can quite do that just yet. <laughs> There's just no pleasing you. Here you are, the great thing you're doing, and we're like, I'm like, what about this? And Chad's like, what about this? <laughs> oh. Shoot. Sorry I... for running late, man. It's uh, yeah. My trainer. Normally, my, I train at eleven, but on Mondays it has to be noon, and it's just a close enough shave to make it back in time that I was feel bad. Um, <sighs> I have a hard out at one, my time, our time. We Pacific Coast, um, three o'clock. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let me 
afford you this. We got, I, we, I got a lot of like weird things topic emails over the past week and I f feel like I forgot to send them. I will use those next week because we got a, we got a, we got a, what a big discussion today. You can just call it a shaming. Like, oh, I know, I know what's coming. Okay, you beat d d Demir all you want. Demir all you want. No. I know what's coming. No way. He's gonna he's gonna give us the the the, the wide eyed, uh, what it's like to stare into the face of God. All right. Well, uh, if you guys are good to go. <laughs> yeah, feeling it. Uh, Andrew, you good? Mm -hmm. Oh, he's drinking some drink. Got is. him! Got him! Got him! <laughs> what guy? I'm a, I'm a radio professional. Boy, that's that's been one really weird thing about the podcast res revolution is uh, that we've discovered people have a tolerance for non-radio voices, for stammers and starts and ums and ahs and all that. What stuff. are you trying to say, Brian? <laughs> I was saying that personality trumps precision. How about that? Well, I mean, that's one of the things like, about Elon Musk is you know, out here in this town, I'd be like, oh, it's a horrible speaker. He's just, he's like, no, he's earnest. He's real. You know, everything that come, he says, do you believe he believes? Where if I'm like, well, the thing we're trying to do with our spacecraft, I'm like, this guy's lying. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. <laughs> Our revolutionary technology. It's an ad. It's an ad. Don't believe it. Yeah. Yep. Skip, skip, it's skip. Get ad. to the video. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, if you're good, Andrew, yep. then take it away in three, two. Welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Maine, joined by Brian. I did not attend this Falcon Heavy launch, Brushwood. Uh, yeah, no, that's my gimmick. I'm the guy who does not drop. Uh, actually, I'm really glad I didn't go because it turned out that the schedule I was doing, I would have had the miserable experience of being there with you, getting antsy, having to leave like minutes before uh, it, it, it going off. So because it was it yeah. was pushed because yeah. of your choices and. Uh, Justin does not care about SpaceX, the future frontier, Robert Young. What did I say before we started going live? Yeah, for those of guys who haven't listened to or not here live in the pre-show, Justin said, I know what this is going to be. It's going to be a big shaming. And then, and with all the sincerity, I, that, that, I mean, one might suggest that you should not trust Andrew Maine because he looked us dead in the eyes. He's like, no, 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 no. Won't do that at all. Just no, going to tell one, you. I the... knew this is coming. I got, I got. Here's how giddy Andrew has been to <laughs> rightly. By the way, let me let me come. Uh, out by the way, and our say, producer, by the way, was, is Bryce rightly, did not attend. Rightly shamed. Also did not attend. I watched. <laughs> I I did watch it. I did have to skip uh, back because I was showering when it happened. But yeah, and and <laughs> speaking of which, I I think uh, in our defense, um, I, and again, I can't know because I wasn't there and you were there. But but I gotta tell you, it was a hell of a show watching that whole thing live streamed it was electric and deeply meaningful to me definitely got choked up i mean it was amazing justin you're gonna say something i'm just saying that i got andrew was so excited to shame us here on the program that he was bragging to mutual friends about how much we, he was going to shame us <laughs> on the weird <laughs> things podcast that got back to me so I knew that this was coming. I knew that no matter what that 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 box looked like, there was going to be a novelty punching fist uh, inside of it. And by the way, let me just say again, correctly so, because in watching that that clip, if if I could have bent space and time and done everything, uh, made uh, you know everything work, I, I I would have been there. It was an amazing thing to watch in in a digital medium. But let's go ahead and clear the floor so Andrew can correctly and rightly explain the uh, 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 the, 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 the magnitude of such beauty. Uh, and, and let me say, I mean, it's we we all live complicated lives and we have to make choices. And I get that. And I and I, I totally get that. Um, and I didn't watch Super Bowl Sunday. Right. And I'm weird for that. I, I didn't watch it. I'm like every year it's another one. You know, um, I don't watch it. I get it. But I, I'm not like, oh, people, it's a Super Bowl. It's a dumb thing. No, no, I've watched it before and enjoyed it. Um, and, you know, but I'm just not. 
It's not not my thing. And so I'm not like, oh, it's easy to do this, but like I didn't, didn't care, you know. Uh, Academy Awards, Oscar, stuff like that. Don't matter. Don't really matter to me. I have my own things that I'm really, really into. All, and I all get- of those things, I found that my interest is directly proportional to the number of people around me who are into it. Like, you know, I, their enthusiasm can rub off on me and I can get excited about it. Uh, but, yeah. But something like so- this, just inherent, like there's a magnetism from your heart drawing you into this thing. Yeah, I've I've had on my phone for... Two, three years, two years, three years since they first released the animation of the Falcon Heavy, which is beautiful to watch the actual thing and look as I hold up my phone, and that's the animation of it. I've had this on my phone. Yeah. Right? Because then I told myself, I've been to most of the major SpaceX launches. Uh, Justin and I have been to a couple of them. And I've told myself, uh, I was going to go to this launch. It's going to the Falcon Heavy because for me, as a, as a space fan, as a guy who, like, I'm, I'm, you know, I eat this stuff up all day long. Uh, I'm like, I need to be there for this. I need to be there. And so once we had confirmation of the date when it was going to be, I went ahead, booked myself a ticket, first class ticket. I had to go there, you know, that way, style. Oh, my uh, God. Of course. If you're going to yeah. if you're going to do the insane thing of going across country to watch a rocket, you want yeah. everything. Ab- you, it's worth it to splurge it to make sure you just remember all the joy in the world. That's amazing. Now- I, I wanted they had ticket packages where you could get what was called feel the heat, which was the closest package you could. And they're like 150 bucks a piece. I was about I'm like, man, I should I should get like one or two of those. I'm like, well, I'll just wait for Justin and Brian to tell me what they're doing. Oh, oh, but we didn't. Yeah, and then we didn't. So I didn't get that. I, I didn't get it because I'm like, I didn't want to just get myself one. And then if you guys couldn't do it, then realize I need to get another package. So I ended up getting what was called close. It was like it was close enough because your friends, you know, were debating whether or not to go. So I got the close enough package, you know, <laughs> it was it was, it was Justin, enough? I, Justin, I think we need to apologize to it there. I'm sorry like, that we totally ruined your Falcon Heavy once no, in a great. lifetime was, viewing it experience. It was great. I mean, I genuinely <laughs> waited to order those because I was waiting to hear what my buddies were like. Yeah, we're going to go do this thing. We're going to do it. It's fine. Yeah, it's, it's good. I, I saw it in a pretty good, pretty good spot. Um <laughs> And there's a building, you know, the little obstruction and stuff there. And, and, um, uh, but it's, it's fine. Uh, <clears throat> I, I apologize. I, 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 I would like I would like to uh, just go ahead and, and say I personally apologize for, for making this lesser. Yeah, I appreciate Apology accepted. So anyhow, I went there anyways. I watched it from the Rocket Garden. OK, the Rocket Garden at Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. And uh, if you've never been there, it's really amazing. They've got all these different rockets on display, actual rockets that they used in the Gemini program, that they used in the Mercury program, historic space spacecraft things. You can actually go step, stick your head inside of some of them, some of like the demonstration ones, whatever. It was a really, really cool location to do this. They, oh, there's a graphic up there of this. It's just amazing. Then uh, they had a big video screen set up. You were able to bring, uh, you could bring uh, your chair. So I went there with my producing partner, Mary Jarris. You guys all know Mary. Mm-hmm. And so Mary's a big SpaceX fan too. I said, hey, do you want to go? She's like, yeah, let's go. So we all went to go see this thing. And I got chairs at Walmart the night before. Almost all the chairs were gone, right? But I found two camping chairs. We brought those up, set those up in the grass, and then we walked around and did the, the what was amazing was Kennedy Space Center was sold out. But you had you had access to the exhibits, but everybody was out there on the lawn waiting for the launch. But, you know, having done launches before, I know, like, you know, it's a a couple hours of nothing happening. Yeah. So we parked our chairs there and we went around and we did the exhibits. There was like nobody in the exhibits. Oh, that's great. So there's no lines. Uh, That's the way it was. We went to uh, the zoo on Christmas Eve uh, or maybe it was maybe it was the day before Christmas Eve. And uh, and there was no lines for anything. I went up and fed giraffes and rode camels. It was amazing. Yeah, but like the center was full, but there every and there was like there was a merch line for Falcon, you know, for SpaceX stuff that was long, but everybody's like staying around the staying around the you know the monitor because like oh we don't want to miss this. Like the line to get into this thing was huge, and I got a kind of a neat aside about that. Um, and let me give you just the backup. We're going, we're driving to the Kennedy Space Center complex, and I know how long it takes. Or I've done like press access stuff before there and all that. You have to go through security at that point, like at a certain point that we'd have to do that. But I have a pass here that I had to use to actually get through into there because it's you know this the, the space center is closed off to everybody unless you have you know you bought a ticket for that or whatever as we're driving 
through Cape Canaveral, which is, you know, a bunch of you've ever been there. It's like it's in a swamp. It's a swamp yeah. with a bunch of rocket pads at one end, some buildings and then roads connecting them. Then it's just swamp for the rest of it. We're driving along and, and like maybe like on. one Burger King. There's like a well, not on, Can- not on Cape Canaveral itself. It, on the complex itself, it's just oh, all yeah, government oh, buildings or yeah, space yeah, yeah, in yeah. it. Yeah. So on that on, on that island, yeah, it's it's just it's all that. You go down to Merritt Island, it's different, but up the complex, it's not. So because uh, again, it's like it's they secure the island when they do the launches. It's a danger zone, et cetera. So now we're driving along through the road, the Axis Space Center Highway Road, whatever. Turn a corner, look out over to my right. And I'm like, huh? I'd heard this was here. I didn't realize this was here, and it was this state, the Blue Origin Assembly Facility. Oh. oh, and if you type in Blue Origin Cape Canaveral, this thing is huge. And this is not the factory in Alabama where they're building stuff, but this is going to be where they're going to be putting together and, and doing their stuff. And it's got there's this there's like a separate building, which is probably looks like where they store their chemical fuel storage, whatever. It's a big IKEA sized thing. It's it's been a hot minute since we've talked about Blue Origin strategy, partly because you know SpaceX has been hogging up all the news. But uh, Blue Origin is still heavily invested in the single stage to orbit, right? Or or is it no, even no? No, no. They're 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 moving towards. They're going to be doing. I mean, uh, they're yes, they they have a, a single stage. It won't be single stage to orbit. Okay, it's going to be just single stage to space. Which is their the uh, the new Shepard, but what they're working on their next gen rockets, the new Glenn, which will be a two stage rocket, and that'll be an orbital class. New Shepard for a name for Alan Shepard, our first American to go into space when she went mean past the Carmen line. Oh, got it. Whereas uh, Glenn was now, the first to to orbit. Yeah, 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 exactly. John Glenn first to orbit. So they're going to have the next rocket they're building is going to, and they're using. They're using their own engines. They're building the BE-4 engines. That's their next generation engines that they're working on. So they're doing what I think is the right thing, and that is building their own engines in order to do this because they're building methane too. And it's, um, you know, obviously we're we're SpaceX fanboys here, but we're space fanboys overall. And I mm. think we're going to see some exciting stuff come out of Blue Origin because remember, Bezos is the richest man in the world. And he's putting over a billion dollars a year into Blue Origin. He's got some brilliant talent there. So uh, we're going to see some cool stuff from them, too. So um, watching the, uh, what's going on with his uh, his rockets there. And you know they're the, going to the do the same Glenn thing, animation. land the boosters back on Kennedy or land them wherever. They're also building the BE-4 engines for a ULA rocket, the Vulcan. So they're actually going to become a supplier of rocket engines to other companies. Wild. Wild. So then doing drone in uh, the river, there was a whole thing about the whole doing the whole barge landing because you, uh, excuse me, uh, Blue Origin had actually like filed a patent for that. And then SpaceX contested that because they said, hey, this is this is prior art, whatever. And that was one of the things where, like, hey, it's a great competition. I was like, yeah, but here's kind of a uh, this sort of little thing of Blue Origin, maybe looking, looking doesn't and they didn't look good in those optics. Uh, oh, um, for, for for chewing out, uh, saying we have the patent on it, and then you're like, yeah, but you're also not capable of doing it yet. So yeah, it, so. it's it's yeah, it's a, but but you know there was we saw there was a nice friendly <laughs> they say, back. They say thing. as settlement here, have a Tesla if you can get it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Um, so as as the, it, it it seemed as resolved a bit. Jeff uh, Jeff Bezos had a very nice you know uh, tweet. Uh, tweet he sent out last week, you know, wishing success to SpaceX and the Falcon Heavy launch. Uh, Elon Musk responded with an emoji kissing, you know. <laughs> and so it's it's this is where we want this to be. You know, I want to go to SpaceX launches and cheer them on. I want Blue Origin to be doing some cool stuff and be excited about that. You know, we want we want this is where it was. So you anyhow, know, that this, was I was excited to see that. And, uh, and that re, 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 a quick side jag here. Um, this is what it felt like in the 1800s. Uh, the so-called ro- robber barons, the captains of industry, were that were changing the rules for steel and the golden spike that that linked the two sides of the United States, um, the continental U.S. Um, as a kid, I wondered how must that have felt, and I get to know that now. You know, we, we, we these are the guys that a hundred years from now will still have their names uh, sung or cursed. For for generations, well, probably to still come. be alive, given you know their push for <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Could be. But I mean, it's a, it's a special thing to realize, like like we are ex- experiencing real life history, you know. Yeah, it's 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 a it's cool. So we go do the tour of the Kennedy Space Center complex, and have you ever got you ever you've done that before? 
Um, not Kennedy. I've done. Uh, I, I did Space Center Houston, and uh... so what's cool about Kennedy was they have the Space Shuttle Atlantis there, right? And they have this exhibit where you go through, and it's very. They they revamped this thing over the last ten years, dec- few, uh, decade or so theme park level and i mean in a good way it went from sort of this kind of like there's a science museum approach to doing some things which sometimes doesn't work or it's kind of like okay and then they kind of did this let's increase the level so they have a they have an atlantis attraction where you walk through you go see this amazing you know, they have a specially presented movie about kind of this a, a, a version of the story of how the reusable shuttle idea came about and whatnot there we have actors playing out parts and you go into another section and then you go into this room this big uh, round shaped room with these round screens all around you and then you watch a shuttle take off and launch up into the air which is amazing and then at the end of that you're like built up like this is an amazing thing look what we've done as humans and this amazing you're like yeah and then that screen that you've been watching this on slides up and that oh. view you just saw of the space shuttle atlantis is right in front of you that's brilliant that's that's, br- awesome. that's good storytelling right there yeah, it is absolutely. I have. I, I just started. I just as soon as it opened up, I just started grabbing photos. I'm like, oh, that's brilliant. Because like, if you go to the one here in California, it's like, yep, there it is, over in the corner. Like, oh, yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. So here you're like, oh my god, it's the Atlantis. <laughs> <laughs> the best part though. The best part though was before we went into the exhibit. They had a super nice Space Center, uh, I don't know what they call their docent guide or whatever, who was talking to us and explaining the one who, like, because they let a certain amount of people at a time, giving us the uh, a spiel. Oh, <laughs> and keep in mind, this is this is a tour guide. who uh, Tour guide. This is a tour guide. They're, they're always... A- these guys are always uh, having new groups. There's always something launching. Today it's another Iridium satellite. Uh, this one's going to monitor the weather. There's this. Uh, you know, you, you glance at it so that you can he's, mention he's it. giving everybody some color of one of what's around, the things that are going around, describing some of the different companies here <laughs> building stuff. Everything he said was wrong. Everything he really? said was wrong. It was funny. I mean, it was just he was he was con- confusing the ULA with OneWeb and these things, all this other stuff like this. Everything he said was wrong. But it's fine. The best part was, though, the best part was he was a very sweet, sweet man. Okay, But the best part is he goes, so yeah, SpaceX today is launching the, launching the Falcon Heavy and they're they're putting into, they're sending up a car from Tulsa. <laughs> 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 and, and I'm like, I, I don't think the fat. <laughs> oh, Tesla. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, at our friend Mary, I mean, it's a car from Tulsa. And I had the same reaction like, beat, beat. Tesla. <laughs> 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 launching a car from Tulsa. So, yeah, some random guy, they just took his car. You know? <laughs> so, anyhow, he went away, and there's this woman with her daughter. She had a daughter who's really, really into space science. The girl was, like, you know, was on the spectrum, so she had you know, some communication. So she loved space, was there to see this. And she saw the exchange, This the looks I gave to Mary, and, and then she said to me, says, uh, could you explain to me what's going on? Because I don't think that guy knew. <laughs> <laughs> That's was, amazing. Again, his everything. What he said though was his enthusiasm was there, and he was making a point. We did say so he's like, "Hey, listen, we've all these businessmen here. Everybody's buying up the land. The big things are coming there." So it was exciting. So that was the preamble to the launch to go watch this. Um, and you're there with. Thousands of people who are super space fans. Some of them are SpaceX fans. Some of them are just space enthusiasts and stuff. You know, I saw I saw a six year old kid and his grandmother both wearing Occupy Mars shirts. That's okay. awesome. That's great. You, you, that's you're, you're you're seeing people running around in space. It was like a, I strive. It's like a college football game. You know, it was like but SpaceX was the team. So it was a very very exciting thing to be there. And so if you saw the launch, I don't need to recap. What happened in the launch itself? I'll tell you what was really cool, though. Being there, watching this on the screen, and being we were seven miles away from the uh, the launch was you have the thing where you see it on TV start to launch, and the timing was super close. We've watched I've watched launches before where the delay was like thirty seconds, and you're waiting for the countdown, like five, forty, or oh. you're like. <laughs> 
time delay. Uh, but anyhow, uh, the thing launches, and a few moments later, you look out and you see the flame, and you see the rocket rising up into the beautiful blue sky, and then you get the noise, and then the rumble, you feel it in your chest, you know? Yeah. And there were 27 Merlin engines going off. 27 engines. Now, what was important about this launch was that that is the most number of engines, like, ever used uh, outside of the Russians that experiment or the rocket system that used 42, and it was very problematic. They had ignition problems, things like this. So there was a debate as to whether or not the 27 engines, you know, 27 engines like, Elon Musk, you've gone too far. This was a rocket that Musk proposed way back in like 2012, and it kept getting delayed. You know, it wasn't saying, it's like, oh, I'll be ready in this year, in six months we'll do the launch. No, we won't. We'll be this time. No, we won't. And people started to say, is it going to happen? And the thing with Musk is his deadlines tend to slip, but when he delivers, man, does he deliver. Yeah. NASA had been approached before about using this rocket. And internally, the story is there. They're like, man, eh, it's never going to happen. It's not going to happen. And then there was this 27 rocket engines trying to simultaneously ignite that. When you look at other rockets that are like three cores, whatever, they're usually like, like a single engine per that. Remember the shuttle, when that took off, it had two solid rocket boosters with one, you know, one engine on each one. And then the shuttle itself, main engines were three engines. Um, Saturn V was five, you know, I mean, it was just just unheard of idea of using this 27 engine thing. But, you know, the Musk mentality, as he describes it, like computer servers, mm -hmm. says that, you know, I can have on the Falcon 9, I have nine engines, like I think two or three engines can go out and the thing still works. Yeah. Uh, here, when they want to do the, the BFR, the Big Falcon spaceship, which they're going to start production on into this year and probably try to, he says they want to help test launch this into next year. 31 engines but now that he's done 27 engines yeah now, now it doesn't seem so crazy right so uh oh i'm sorry i didn't interrupt you oh no 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 i i, I had a different place i want to go uh but 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 continue okay so yeah so we watch you see the thing rise up and now you're looking at the rocket and you're watching this thing and everybody there is has been because you hear like you know, I give it a 50 50 chance of success you know I, I don't want to destroy the launch pad if I cannot destroy this historic launch pad I'll be very very happy so you're kind of like you're kind of like ready to be like hear a boom and be like hey guys they gave it a good show good thing we tried let humanity is just pushing it forward you know see you next time then anyways launch and then then Oh, just one more point, more live mode about is after you see that, you see the separation, and then a few minutes later, you're watching the screen, but it's blue. You can't see anything, and all of a sudden, you see two little bright fires light up in the sky, and that's when the boosters are doing their boost back burn. And then a little while later, you see two tiny slivers of white, and you're looking up in the sky – and you're seeing the boosters come back. Now, we'll forget the fact that once that boost back starts, you're having basically two nine-story tall guided missiles are heading in your direction. <laughs> and that, boy, that's something I didn't consider. Yourself. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, they're, wait, we're basically in that target. <laughs> it's basically <laughs> coming right back at us. You know, and there's like before before the launch, by the way, they read out an announcement that says, hey, just a lady, ladies and gentlemen, just a detail. You are inside of a hazardous area. And in the event of an explosion or whatever like that, please don't panic. Please don't do this. Da, da, da. I mean, it's this whole disclaimer about like, yeah, listen, if it hits the shan, we don't just scream it around and panicking, you know, um, like and everybody's going to laugh at that. I'm like, yeah, remember, there's the map. That thing goes boom. It'll be loud. So. Uh, you see the boosters coming, finally coming, you see this falling, and you're watching them, you see them on the monitor, you see that screen, but then you look up live, and you just see these things falling from space, and when I was a kid, I still have these day to this day, I'd have dreams about watching, like, cool spacecraft and stuff, way high up, way high up doing, like, cool maneuvers and stuff, and hovering and landing, and you're watching these things just fall from space, and you're like, holy cow. You see things you keep plummeting, 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 plummeting. Like, how are they going to stop? And then you see the ignition burn, and they go behind some trees. And then you watch on the screen as, boom, the simultaneous landing and release. So, Dude, there you go. Uh, so now we get to the part where I, I have a very mild conspiracy theory. <laughs> and uh, regardless, they knocked it out of the park. It occurs to me, however, that 
uh, when 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 a company announces their quarterly earnings report, uh, they they are direct and honest, uh, but they want to help guide expectations beforehand. So they very publicly say we're hoping this quarter will be so and so or whatever. But then there are secret whisper numbers that usually leak out and people people are aware. So maybe they'll announce, yep, we hit all of our targets. Here's the actual amount we made, and the stock will go down because that number is lower than the whisper number, right? SpaceX is an extraordinarily media savvy company. And I, just as a flight of fancy, could imagine that the whisper numbers are, yeah, we feel really good about getting to orbit. Uh, I'd say the odds are 99%. I think we feel really good about landing the, the two uh, 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 strapped on boosters. Uh, those are, well, let's put that at 95% that both of them will land, no problem. Um, this, this drone one, I'm going to say there's a 50% chance, Elon, that it might miss the drone. We're worried about this. This is the least tested of the three. Um, w would you like us to arrange for some interference on the live stream from the drone? Because that's the only thing that went off without a hook. It feels to me like it wouldn't be a bad deal for someone to say, yeah, let the media crew know that that connection might be a bit sketchy and that we might lose it due to vibrations and have this finger on the trigger. And if it doesn't look like it's going to go right, uh, just just press pause and uh, and we'll we'll have a very short blackout. And then and then because the story, I mean, they threaded the stone needle. Not only did they do it, but they did it in such a perfect way that no that that the one part of it that didn't uh hit exactly perfectly right there's no footage of it at which to me would be the even smarter better version of of, of spacex to plan for that is is that out of the question am i just crazy uh, well i mean i don't i mean you know only a handful of people really know i would i would say that the, the evidence i would offer like one like they were 99 percent sure that they were not going to have a rocket explode on the launch pad from fueling right and that happened they were very positive they weren't the first explosion that the steel the strut they were using wasn't going to break in there. And so, you know, for Elon Musk's point of view is there everybody can say, yeah, these are the we think it looks good, but there are all these unknowns. And then there's a thousand things that can go wrong. I deal with this like I have a project which we'll talk about later on. People are like, oh, should you stay safe and all this? I'm like, yeah, but I can tell you 12 things that are a problem that I have to worry about that you, unless you know what's going on, you don't really realize like, oh, yeah, that's a problem. So. I think his concern was just based upon past times when, like, yeah, we thought we were right on this. When they finally did the landing on land, they were seemed pretty confident, like, yeah, we think we got this because they went through all the different kinds of explosions, things that could go wrong, they could do this. As far as cutting the 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 live feed, you know, because they knew uh, they knew there was a high chance that that was not going to make. Um, Maybe. I mean, you'd have to ask, like, OK, do they know it wasn't going to make it? Because they could have just said, you know, well, we're just going to dump that in the ocean, whatever. The challenge is the problem is, is that if you've watched past ones, the live feed almost always very frequently cuts out before the landing on the drone ship because the rocket comes in with so much vibration. You have to use a directional satellite antenna and it knocks it out of alignment. Got it. And and that's been a problem. We've seen this before where they've done it where it keeps getting knocked out of alignment. And then finally, you know, they get signal again. And then you see it there standing. There's been a number of launches where it just goes blank at that point. You're like, what happened? What happened? What happened? And then it cuts to it. And there's the rocket standing there. In my um, in my imagination, so. there's like a hard nosed PR lady who who, come, who kicks the door into the live stream crew and says, you, <laughs> you know, tomorrow morning when the news hits, we do not see a crashing drone. You understand? Stand or I mean, but that's, that's that's the thing though is that like gigantic fireball uh, uh, you know conflagration crashes has kind of also been a part of their sure, brand but but right? but like at a place where they already have the massive success you know that they're not going to show the two landing perfectly if they have the option to show the one blowing up the next day like they're I mean, not going to run maybe. the two over uh, over the other the two successes over the one failure yeah, I, 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 I hear your point. I don't. It's, it's not outside the realm of possibility. 
Uh, you know, they're extremely transparent, but they want to be transparent in a way that they can control. So I, I think it is what it is. But your your, your suggestion there, I'm not I'm like, no, Brian, and, and, a and large again, I have, million dollar company for, at the whim of investors and assets would never do that. <laughs> to be to be clear, I have I have no dog in the fight and zero evidence to back up my theory. Yeah. It just seems to me like everything about it went it so perfectly, well. including uh, including that moment. That's the only one that, that is, is so, I'm so glad, like, here's the point. I found myself as a SpaceX fan, so, so glad that the internet went out, uh, that like, what a wonderful, happy coincidence that kept the focus of the news cycle on the successes because there was no exciting sh uh, footage of the disaster part. And it was such an important part of it that it just occurs to me that that if if somebody was was savvy and direct enough that maybe, you know, maybe a happy accident isn't just an accident. Well, and, and I was feeling kind of similar on the day of the launch because, A, we, we saw the, the the feed freeze up, which is, is pretty standard. I don't know that I've ever watched one of these live ones and actually seen everything go perfectly footage. Yeah. Come in, come in live. Yeah. Uh, but you would also think, hey. They can't get another boat out there. Yeah, <laughs> but but also like it, it it took a while for the confirmation that that core was lost to come out, which was kind of a bummer. Um, you know, you want it, you want all this stuff to, to succeed, but equally, it took a minute for for that to come out, and yeah. I didn't even see it on the official SpaceX feeds. Uh, it was from someone else. That's the, the other thing too is they're they're so savvy in that they didn't start the live uh, feed until they were very close to launch. And then the moment they were done, they Took stopped right everything off. because yeah. they realized that, that yes, this is a live stream, but the beginning and the end are, are, are going to be what, what, you know, this is going to live. More people are going to watch it offline than online. And so as a result, they kept it super tight. This, this 35 minute, uh, well package. Yes. And, but remember there was a five hour live stream that started. Oh, there was, they had a separate one. Starman. Uh, oh, yes. Yes. Of so course. they started a live stream because once, remember the payload now, they had the Falcon, excuse me, they had the uh, the Roadster strapped to the upper stage. And uh, this last minute revelation was that because they're sitting here, they're seeing the Falcon, you know, they're sitting, they're sitting the Roadster with Starman, you know, their space SpaceX mannequin put attached in there with all the inside jokes there, which we can talk about. They were sending this on an orbit to take it past the orbit of, you know, the orbit of Mars. But because part of what they want to do with the Falcon Heavy is they want to be able to do Air Force launches, the Air Force, to be fully capable of handling all the Air Force requirements for launch, there are about like nine different orbits you have to have. You can have, you know, a regular equatorial orbit, kind of you do it like the International Space Station does. You're in low Earth orbit, 200 miles up. You can have polar orbits. There are geosynchronous orbits. There's like, I think, roughly like nine different positions. The Air Force says, if you can do the, this, you're fully qualified to handle our different payloads. So what big part of some of those, the more the more tricky ones, you need a lot of energy. You need a lot of energy. It's not how much you can carry, but it's how much energy you can do to get to that orbit. And you have to spend some of them like five hours or more going through the Van Allen radiation belts. That's that belt filled with these highly charged particles that can screw things up. We send our astronauts through there very quickly so they don't get irradiated, et cetera. So they spent five hours sending the upper stage through there, hoping it didn't fry the electronics before it did its burn to go into its, its extreme orbit it had. So uh, while they did this, they were able, while it was in Earth orbit for that five hours, they were able to transmit signal. They had a battery for like a 12-hour battery, whatever on there for transmitting. They sent back these live images of views of the car the views from the passenger area i mean the views of this amazing views of an object that's much further away from the earth than usually we're accustomed to way further out than the iss goes whatever this is further than any human has been yeah the, uh, since, the, the you example know, 1970s. the example that i remember reading uh when james cameron edited an episode an issue of wired magazine he pointed out that that uh, after the the lunar missions no human being uh, has ever seen uh, Earth in its totality. It's a, he described the view from the ISS as the equivalent of putting your cheek on a basketball, and and you know you're you're up there, you can see a lot, but it's like you can't take in the totality of all of Earth at once. And so uh, this is uh, uh, phenomenal. Yeah, he said, and I remember the line he said: since the lunar missions, not one, uh, uh, not one man, and he, he did comma, and never a single woman has beheld all of Earth, Earth in its totality at once. And it's like, mm -hmm. 
I'm so excited that I'm going to live to hear that made false. That's that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So the the Starman images are wonderful. They're great. It's great uh, publicity. It's great media. It's understanding. It's great showmanship. It was actually doing a real purpose, real. They needed to do an actual payload. Uh, did you know, have you heard the statistics on the SpaceX Live YouTube feed? No, but I know that waiting before it even started, there were nearly a million people waiting in a room with no live stream. It was amazing. Second most watched live stream ever. Is that, I, wow. I, Can I guess that the first is the first Felix Baumgarten? That was it. Yeah. Stratus jump. Number one, that. Number two is this. Okay, now this has racked up a total of 20, you know, 19 million views so far. Number one most li watched live event ever. And you look at the plays of Starman now. You looking if you look to the right, you're going to see people are doing a lot of mix-ups of that. Uh, you know, we've had some of our fans or some of our friends of the show who are teachers and stuff had their kids watch this in class. And you're a kid. You're a kid. You don't get space. Don't care. Whatever. You see this car and this mannequin astronaut there in front of earth and you're like this is live this is a thing real right now you're like oh that's cool yeah i mean th this to me was the realization of the greenhouse on mars you yeah. know this this is you know when when elon musk talks about you know the the initial idea of the greenhouse on mars being about uh stakes right and and the idea was that would be the furthest that you could show Furthest away from Earth that you could grow Earth life, right? There that anything living had had been from our planet. And this was to me exactly that idea of like look at something that is compelling and interesting and yet, like you guys have pointed out, so scientifically relevant and and so promising for the future. And and if you know, Elon Musk's initial idea for SpaceX was literally just to get the public more behind space than hell. I mean, like, like, look at, look at what we've done. Yeah. And it's, it was being there was a huge event. They had like 10 or 20 times as much press as they normally get. When I checked into my hotel, I hear this voice coming from the bar, which, you know, which there was like people still there talking, even though it was after closed. And I hear, well, the thing about space that's inner and it's Bill Nye, the science guy you wow. know, explaining to people, you know, and you're like, uh, that is not. I made that up. That is not true. The quote that I attributed to him. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wrote on Twitter. I'm like, so Bill Nye's here, and then I wrote him quoting him going, so the atomic number of uranium is 92, just like my room number. Wink. Wink. <laughs> Did not do that. He is a gentleman and an explainer, and a kind-hearted man. So sorry. <laughs> I had to. Uh, but anyhow, uh, it was felt big being there, right? Getting back to the airport uh, two days later, getting on the plane, I saw, and there was way, I can only imagine it was like the day before, but getting back on the plane to go back to L.A., lots of SpaceX gear everywhere, right? And it was like it was like after a college football game, people returning home, whatever, uh, with enthusiasm. The thing that surprised me, and again, I'm there in the middle of it, though, was the reaction has been so wonderfully positive. Yes, stupid people on social media have said things. This is the world we live in. Somebody somewhere will say something stupid. You're going to get these stupid things. People say and people who are just like, man, rich guy put in his car in space. All right, next. Um, I've read editorials across the political spectrum cheering this on, cheering on what happened. Reasonable people of all sort of approaches got it. It excited people. And I... I was blown away by how much attention this has gotten. I've been blown away by the positive reaction that it has received, and I'm thrilled to see that. It is, gives me hope because we've talked about when will people get excited about people, when will people pay attention. People paid attention to this launch, and technically it's just a hardware demo. There's no people involved, whatever. When SpaceX does the next major thing, which will be when they start putting first unmanned the crew capsule up there to test that, and then when finally, maybe into next this year, probably more like next year, when SpaceX and Boeing are putting actual astronauts back into American hardware, okay, the first time we'll have had people go up on American spacecraft since in 2011, the first new craft to go into space. This will be the first new craft that people will be on board 
in 40 years. You know, the first shuttle was 1981. So no, by no. next year or so, it'll be almost 40 years since then. So think about the first new spacecraft in 40 years. Kind of awesome. I mean, look, here's here's what I think changed over the last week is that previously a lot of space arguments were very theoretical. It was very, for, for the majority of people, obviously we've been kind of very closely following step by step uh, the progress of a lot of these companies, including SpaceX. But for most people, it was kind of how many angels can dance on the head of a pin. And I think that it should be NASA. And I think it should be this. And I think it should be that. Justin, but nobody really I, paid I, all that much attention to it until you see it in action and you're like, wait, this is not a theoretical, maybe they'll do it, maybe they won't, maybe they should focus on tourism first. This is done. It's happened. It's ready to go. So now the question is, how do we want to use it? And that, to me, from the like super uh, 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 NASA uh, fans who, for whatever reason, believe that SpaceX is the enemy, to the hardcore uh, 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 you know the libertarians that were whatever uh, that I wouldn't I don't know put a political uh, bend on it, but people who believe that Elon Musk is some tax cheat or something like welfare queen. What, yeah. Welfare queen, exactly. When you look at that, it's like, oh, crap. This is real. This is something that can be sold. This is something that we can use. So now the far more interesting question isn't if, it's what we do with it. Justin, you were very sweet to couch this uh, so politely, but I think it's very clear what you guys are asking for. Yeah. I'm sorry I was wrong for saying we should build a space elevator. Clearly, <laughs> reusable oh rockets were the right answer. <laughs> you guys were right, and I was wrong. If we Finally! Would've, you know, we would have had that audio. We would have had that. If we were a better show, we would have pulled that audio of, <laughs> of the, the space elevator argument. <laughs> I was wrong. You that, were right. Basically... <laughs> um, uh but and I I will reiterate though that the the until Elon Musk and it was think National Press Club 2011 stood there in front of his podium and said hey yeah we're working towards reusability with you know boosters and the whole rocket we're working towards this thing we've done the math and it's possible I didn't know I didn't know this was like a thing that could be done. And apparently a lot of other people didn't because they told them, no, you're not going to be able to reuse the first stage. NASA would have done, literally, if NASA, if it could be done, NASA would have done that. You know, would have been done. We'd be doing it. It's not happened, you know. And then they're like, ah, oh, yeah, you maybe you could do it, but there's really not a cost benefit. Hey, guess what? We just knocked $20 million off the price of launch. It's a gimmick. It's a gimmick, you know. Now, every space agency now is working towards trying to figure out their own reusable rocket because they're like, you know, we we kind of was like Apple and the iPhone and all the cell phone companies. You know, they're like, yeah, these PC guys are going to come in here and make a phone. <laughs> you know, what do they know? Right. Turn, turns out a lot. So uh, uh, two big questions is how fast do you think we start to see the uh, the trickle down effects of reusability and, and the cost reduction? Um, and uh, number two, how far off do you think the next functional uh, launch of the Falcon Heavy is? One is now. We're already seeing. We're already having. They're already launch customers that are getting getting discounts for using reusable rockets. That has already affected the price of that. Now, if you go to SpaceX or excuse me, go to Reddit.com/r/ SpaceX, they have a launch manifest, and in the right corner, they will show you the uh, the upcoming launches, and you'll see the recycled symbol, which means they're reusing a booster from before. Okay. Oh wow. Now, what they're doing right now is that they have. The the boosters they're reusing, um, they're he's actually cleaning out the inventory of these things because like right now a lot of those are not reusing them because they don't need those because they're working on the end of a few more months whatever towards the end of the year they're gonna finish they're gonna finish the the va the basic version of the Falcon Nine which would be the Block Five variant. Block Five is the version of the Falcon Nine that they're building, taking in everything they've learned about reusability. What do they need to do internally? What do they do externally? How do they make this thing reusable? So once they have Block Five, uh, those are going to be the boosters they're going to keep using and using forever. They want to get like ten uses out of those. I think is what they're trying to do. 
So instead of having to build one rocket, you know, building 10 rockets, you know, for 10 launches, you build one rocket for 10 launches of the lower stage. So uh, that will bring in costing. Now, right now, they're trying to recoup their investment costs and stuff, but there has been a reflection. Elon tweeted out today the price of a Falcon Heavy launch can comparison to the uh, the Delta IV Heavy, which has been pre prior to this was the big heavy lift you used. And the Delta IV, yeah, Delta IV is a $400 million launch cost. Falcon Heavy is $150 million. And wow. it also has something like double the payload or something like this. And that's fully expendable, by the way. That's if, the, that's if you're not reusing the Falcon. That's if the Falcon, if you're dumping the first stages into the ocean, okay? If you're reusing it, you know, you might it might come down. I think it's going to come to like $80 million or $90 million or something like that. So you have $400 million is how much you paid before. Now you can pay, if you're using reusable, you can pay $100 million. I'm not a math guy. <laughs> that is how much the government paid for those things. When I watched an Orion launch, when I've watched these, these payload things, half a billion dollars. Okay, now you're getting a substantial, substantial change. What's very disruptive now is we've talked about the SLS program. Okay, this is the big, huge heavy lift thing, which is you know, and it's still like people the, like oh, the SLS know, is basically power. the successor to the shuttle. Basically, the government. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the yeah, and the the it's designed to be our our preeminent heavy lift vehicle. It uses shuttle technology and Saturn V tech. It's it's full. It's not reusable. Like oh, it's the next. It's a successor to the shuttle. It's not reusable. Like well, it could be, but it's not. It's like oh, we could and you could you could maybe reuse the side boosters. There's no plan to do that. We've spent about twenty billion dollars on that so far. They plan to spend the, the right now. They're spending about two billion dollars every year on the development of this thing. Two billion dollars a year. And when this thing is finally ready. It will cost over a billion dollars a launch. Be like, well, it's more powerful than the Falcon Heavy. It's like, yeah, in the in the biggest configuration, it's really more. It's you know, they, NASA's like, we can carry 134 elephants. They can only carry 100. <laughs> you know, it's like, so those yeah. extra 34 elephants cost us 800 million dollars. So, do you think that this is just going to continue because of the sunk cost fallacy? Like, you've we've spent this much on it. There's too much political capital tied up in it. And, and Ted Cruz pretty much made that argument. He says, like, you know, I know there's a sunk cost fallacy, but you know, we, we've talked. About, I think you know we've talked about that. Or actually, no, that was made about the the International Space Station. Was another thing to bring up. Yes, that is the problem. There is the sunk cost fallacy. We have paid this much to get this far, and that's the problem. It's people like, why would we not? Uh, which is, as we know is dangerous it's ex and you hear that all the time in government we put this much so far and it's not just some cost it's also if we change it then we admit that we wasted your 20 billion dollars and that's and that's ultimately the issue politically as mm -hmm. i put on my political analyst yeah hat, you don't want to have when you're going for re-election you don't want the black and white ad of ted cruz wasted over bleep blop bloop after he abandoned his plan for space you know, that's that's what you are guarding against, which sometimes, you know, don't want to make any political waves here, but sometimes does not lead to the most efficient creation of uh, very delicate uh, programs like space launch and exploration. So there was uh, there's a great talk. Robert Zubrin, who is is, you know, speaks his own mind. Uh, he is, uh, you know, certainly an expert. He was the guy that came with the Mars direct mission, whatnot. Uh, he's, you know, knows Elon. He's been part of, you know, commenting, commenting on what they've been done is very supportive in some ways, has his own ideas on how we should go to Mars and all that. But he was on coast to coast AM and they asked him about this and he was, you know, extremely jubilant about what's been done here and the potential for the Falcon heavy. And he brought up a point. There was a thing called the Augustine commission, which was like back in like 2011, where they were talking about a, you know, what would it take to go to, you know, to do a, uh, build you know like a moon mission like a return to the moon or whatever like this what are the costs and all that and they said to build a new like a new heavy lift rocket for this capability to do this what we need they said you know we're gonna need you know they said we're gonna need like 20 years in 60 billion dollars he says is what it would cost like 20 years and 60 billion dollars and elon musk brought up the falcon heavy and they said they laughed at him they're like no that's not realistic you're not going to be able to do that and this was a government commission to judge the feasibility. This must like, we, what if we did, you know, we could do this. We, you know, we could, I'll, I'll, I could deliver it to you for two billion. And they're like, no, no, you couldn't. No, sorry, sorry. Thank you. Get out of the room. And he just did it on his own dime. 
it's it's truly remarkable. The uh, uh, too bad he's a huckster and a fraudster that's just out to swindle the government out of their money. <laughs> Way to go, South Africa! You're yeah. super Wake up, sheeple. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the old the old, uh, the old booster to Mars scam, right? That's that's right after the short change and the big old book of cons. <laughs> I'm sad that uh, I'm sad that I was so petty after the launch. <laughs> As to ju I just tweeted, "Too bad we stopped dreaming." <laughs> well, I'll well, tell let's... you what: if you support if you support that kind of petty behavior, you can support us at <laughs> patreoncom slash things, which we probably could have done about 20 minutes ago, but we were so excited about SpaceX. Uh, patreoncom slash things. Support the show. Get uh, uh, the uh, after things uh, show early. It's a great time. Uh, let's go back to talking about SpaceX. <laughs> So uh, now we have let's let's talk about we'll talk quickly just talk, reiterate what's the future what's next okay yeah um, block five block five block five and crew okay crew is actually their big priority right now they're you know keep perfecting the Falcon nine for block five and then what they're working now block five means reusability lower cost taking everything they've learned remember the the first Falcon rocket we watch launch. Uh, is 50% less powerful than the rocket they have now. Or in that one we have now is 50% more powerful. They've increased these efficiencies. They've added reusability. They've done that. And the next big step, and the thing that keeps delayed, it's, it's challenging, is to build the crew capsules. They'll be able to put people on there and make sure that we can give them safest ride into space you can. And there's a lot of challenges there because NASA has very stringent requirements. On one hand, people are like, well, you know, People died in Saturn missions. People died in shuttle missions. You know, maybe they're being unreasonable with their safety requests. The other argument is like, yeah, we don't want that to happen anymore. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, we, we are going to uh, uh, select the deluxe package, the first class trip in which very few people, possibly none, die. And so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, yes, so it will be more expensive. So that's been – so Boeing's working on the Starliner and SpaceX is working, of course, on Crew Dragon. These things are taking, you know, time. And there was, you know, they were supposed to, like, you know, a year ago maybe been doing the tests on these things. And so that's still in progress. Uh, but that will be the next big thing will be Crew Dragon. And so that's the big thing we're looking forward to. Then, then Elon Musk said something that was very exciting, which uh, it, it was hopeful Elon speak. So don't take it as – he promised me like Elon Long promised this. No, he said he wants to do something at a certain point. Doesn't mean he promised that. He didn't like pinky swear. I'm going to deliver this to you. Okay. Uh, so uh, what he's working on, or said that they're going to try to do now, is the BFR test. Okay. The BF, the big Falcon rocket, which they're going to build in San Pedro. They're going to try. They're, that's the plan right now. San Pedro, California, to the Port of Los Angeles. That's going to be their big assembly facility for the thing because it's huge. This thing will be the upper stage alone. 30 feet across, 150 feet tall, right? I, this I, is a thing for, that for looks context, like For context, how much bigger is that than than what we've seen from the Falcon 9 rockets and so on? Uh, Bryce, pull up a size chart if you can. There's a really good comparison. Do like Falcon Heavy BFR comparisons. And I think there's one that shows like the new Glenn. It's it's not just taller. It's broader, much, much wider. This is a thing that would go to oh my Mars, could go to anywhere in the solar system with a, with a solid surface. <laughs> as impressed okay. as I was with the Falcon Heavy launch and as proud as I am, man, does the BFR uh, uh, give me shower intimidation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, It's a very big rocket. <laughs> so they have like the payload, payload, how much payload it can carry. Like they show the Falcon Heavy can do 30 tons. The uh, BFR in full reuse, full reusability, 150 tons, okay? Five times means, the payload. Like, like uh, uh, wow. And, and it, that's a rocket. And they're saying that's a rocket designed. That goes up. That booster lands, and they just start refueling the booster right away, okay? The spaceship goes up, does its cargo, does whatever, comes back down and lands. They refuel that. Funny thing. Uh Elon Musk has said, hey, we think we could get the first stage to orbit by itself. Wow. Now, the problem is, I mean, there's no fuel to land the thing, but he says, yeah, I think I could get the first stage to orbit by itself, which you want to get a 
space station. This thing has about half the interior volume of the International Space Wait, Station. Isn't that what they did with Skylab? Wasn't Skylab built inside of of uh, the the fuel section? Not not a fuel tank, but it was another. It was another. Uh, it was uh, it was a, like a second stage. Sure, but but I mean, as long as you have a big empty vessel that can be pressurized and and uh, just throw a bunch of them up there, and you got you got a giant space yeah, casino. Yeah, there's a lot of problems trying to use fuel things as that, but yeah, there's the the the. Uh, but yeah, basically, uh, you have the capability to throw stuff up there and carry a lot of heavy material. And so, you know, why the heck not? So you have cool proposals like uh, if you look at like, Bigelow, like Bigelow has their inflatable habitat modules. They have a thing called if you look up, I think it's Bigelow Olympus. Um, they already have a Bigelow. Ha Those are the ones that go up. They attach it. They attach one to the International Space Station. They fill it with air and it expands and increases the interior volume right so they have one in space right now they've tested this thing so this is testing this is space tested technology you could put one of these things inside a falcon heavy and you already have you know a thing that's much bigger than the amount of space we have in the international space station and okay? wow. space steading space steading as a real thing no yeah. so Stay in your orbit long enough it becomes yours get off my orbit so like yeah we have this capability now to be able to launch new space stations and stuff and much more quickly and, and what the technology we have it's a very very exciting period but anyhow so like he says that by the end of next year by the end of next year against so that's 2019 they hope to start testing remember how we watched the grasshopper remember the grasshopper testing the, sure. the falcon 9 remember the first time that video came out and people thought it was faked yeah it looked like it looked like they were playing it reverse yeah like ah, yes it's just a thing it's not real so anyhow they plan on hopefully the end of next year start doing t test hops, probably out of Brownsville, Texas, of the Big Falcon spaceship. And so that thing you saw there, that upper stage thing, we might be seeing that thing next year. Wow. Start testing. Yeah, I'll make the trip down to Brownsville. Yeah. I'll take a game. Brownsville, I'll do. Uh, yeah. But exciting times. Dude. I mean, look. Uh, if, if you're not paying attention when they put a car uh, playing classic <laughs> rock into the you know space and live stream it, like, you know, what do you uh, what, what are you going to pay attention to? I, I think that this this did more. All right, I'm going to say something that, that it might be a little bit counterintuitive, but to me it was the final acceptance of the the you know where where SpaceX is and Elon Musk as a historical figure was when I started to see the like <laughs> the personal backlash against Elon Musk of like, you know, finding elements of his, you know, past marriages and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, who's this guy? And it's like, all right, if that's it, if the idea that mega successful CEO has uh, 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 been not the perfect husband <laughs> is, is if that's where we're left to go, then I'll tell you what, I, I, I saw some of that backlash and i'm like i want to be like hey wait until you find about the nazi past of the guy that created our saturn 5 program oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> hey first rocket to put a man in space do you know where those blueprints came from <laughs> like, i mean look it's it, it just it's just and and everybody is entitled to feel however they want about anybody and i know that there's obviously a, a silicon valley kind of backlash that, that that is certainly in full swing in our in our modern culture but Boy, howdy, man! The 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 uh, <laughs> hips don't lie, and neither do rockets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we just were getting a reports that you know the problem we have with the International Space Station is it has an end of life at like 2024 or whatever like that. That's the period at which they're saying like, okay, there we got to figure out what we're going to do with this. Are we going to put more money into the thing? It's reached its end of like it's it's you know the period at which it was sort of set out to do, and there are a couple options on the table. One is Put a bunch more money into totally refitting it, keep it going, keep the thing you know going on continuously. Um, two is uh, deorbit it, just do what they did with Mirror, which is like, hey, thanks, whatever, take apart the components, whatever, and just deorbit this thing into some place, let it burn up in the atmosphere, and figure out what's next. The other option is let's just sell it off to some private enterprise and see if they want to take it over, what they want to do with it, and so. Right now, it looks like the Trump administration is leaning towards the third one, which is like, let's see if private enterprise wants to take this thing over. I mean, 
Makes sense. Like, we, we, we could put it on the yard sale. We're just going to, like, uh, <laughs> just put a, put a price tag on it, OBO. OBO. <laughs> um, so here's the thing to consider. And when the reaction came out there, there was this first this outrage. Like, oh, my God, I can't believe they're going to do it. Like, hey, number one, we had to figure out a plan for what we're going to do with this. Okay? It's not like all of a sudden he's like, hey, what's this thing up in space? What? <laughs> You know, like, you know, let us sell it. It's like, no, it's like their NASA has been working with this for decades to figure out what do you do at this point with this thing? Because it ain't cheap. The budget for this and actually Boeing has a contract to maintain it, by the way, um, is like. Two billion dollars a year to maintain the International Space Station. OK, it's two billion dollars a year is the budget for that, whatever. I assume that's probably where they pay out for. The support, you know, part of that goes through to like, you know, for uh, support, logistics, all this sort of stuff. I think that's what pays for the cargo supply routes, whatever. I think that's where it comes from. There's a two billion dollar a year budget for this thing. OK, I may be way wrong, but that's what I last remember reading. OK, two billion dollars a year to maintain this thing. OK, now. International Space Station is amazing. This thing's amazing. It's bigger than a football field. When you realize the size of this thing, you just sort of start to, you know, stare at it and all. Although, if you look back at the image of the Big Falcon spaceship next to it, you're like, maybe it's time we think bigger because it kind of dwarfs the space station. The shuttle, looked, and Elon Musk, he showed that image and people laughed because it realized how big the BFR compared to him. He's like, hey, the shuttle looked big, too. The shuttle looked big, too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, it's very, it's on thin ice there. So, if... You take that $2 billion a year. Instead of putting it towards there, you say, let's build a new version. Because remember, that space station is great. Okay, now those solar panels, they're like 40% as efficient as the ones we have now. Okay, These things, these modules are older. We know how to do things bigger and better now. We have new materials, new technology. We, the space station we would design today would be much bigger, have a lot more experimental area. And if we were spending that same amount of money, we would get more science. We'd get a lot more work out of it. So it's that, do we keep doing the thing we're doing or do we say, hey, we're either going to deorbit or go to private enterprise on it? People are like, no, if we deorbit it, whatever, we lose our presence in space. And it's like, uh, and we're more inward, you know, we're cannibalizing a much bigger, better future, in my opinion. Assuming that finances are recent limited, that there's X amount of money to spend. And that's the way you have to look at these things. Cause it, it frustrates me because you'll hear arguments like, you know, like, oh, if we spent more money, like, hey, let's. I'm all for bigger budgets, but let's spend the money we have smarter, which we see that we're not doing that right now. You know, I, I in my opinion, I think SLS is a neat idea, but Dude, I it, think that between it, it makes me that? think about uh, it makes me think about uh, you know Peter Diamandis' book uh, Bold, where it's like if you're building a new company, plan on a hard drive space being free, plan on processing being yep. free, free, plan on the price of of you know uh, figure out what is trending down, and it's like. Okay, if getting to orbit was free, would you spend two billion dollars a year uh, on on this, or, or would you invest it on on something bigger, better, newer? Well, still at work here points out says, and this is you know the three three big Falcon rocket flights could lift the same mass as the entire International Space Station. Wow. Okay? And you can, and utilizing technology like we talked, the inflatable habitats, other stuff, composites, materials like this. We have composite material we did not have in the 90s, okay? We have much larger payload volumes we could do. We could build the really cool space station. We could build spinning space stations. That's a possibility. Hard to do it with the existing ISS thing because uh, to make it work with that infrastructure, whatever, it's problematic. And, you know, I'm of the opinion of like, hey, that was great. Let's if we're just if the if the money is not increasing, then let's use the money for contracting Blue Origin SpaceX to do, you know, supply cargo missions, help build the stuff. Let's go to Bigelow and other people. There are other companies out there, too, that have plans. There's another guy. The former guy was the former uh, International Space Station manager, the guy that was in charge of operating. He's got a private company now and they're like they have their own module they want to put up there. But you know that module can plug into a lot of places. So anyhow, it's it's a lot of it. There's a lot of great hardware docking things. There's a lot of tech up there. Again, I'm in, I'm not. It's valuable, but in a day and age now where it's becoming super cheap to put stuff up there, when they built the space station, it cost $20,000 per pound to put something in orbit. Yeah. With the BFR, you're talking $50 per pound, $40 per pound. That'll get <laughs> Eventually you it gets lot. to, uh, I don't know, how much you got on you. <laughs> yeah. That'll we got get a little you extra a room. Space station. By the way, so. we, we take Venmo. <laughs> yep. 
And I have an attachment, too, because, you know, I work with, you know, uh, James Randi helped develop an experiment that was on board the International Space Station. And so, like, I feel, you know, a little little kinship, a little bit of attachment to that thing. Yeah, keep, but, keep it around. Put a plaque on it and say, hey, remember this? That was pretty cool. Yeah, put a plaque on some dust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, are, are any dissenting opinions or other thoughts? Uh, no, man. Um, yeah, I, I, I think uh, I think that on, on the whole... Uh, the biggest surprise to me was just how savvy, savvy, savvy SpaceX has been when it comes to the media for all that stuff. That presentation was tight and powerful and moving and super good. I wasn't tight. It was, it was the greatest uh, demonstration of space I've ever seen. And you could make an argument that has ever, I mean, since the moon landing, right? Like, when is the last time that more people were got what this meant right like, uh, can i tell you the really weird part was for days afterwards i would casually ask like you watch that 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 foul, that launch and they were like no what and then i was astonished at how many people still don't even know that 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 recovering the first stages is a thing and then you show them the footage and they're like well would you look at that when did that start happening yeah which means you know maybe we just live in a bit of a bubble well i mean look it's this is a thing that you have to be focused on this area, I think, for, for the mainstream to understand it. But at the same time, this was front page news. I mean, if there were still such things as front pages of newspapers, <laughs> but like uh, this was lead image, key image news uh, uh, all over the world. And and again, it's like there is just there's there's no refuting it unless you want to go full tinfoil hat and say it was all faked. But like, you know, uh, uh, other than that, it's like. This is just the future, and the future builds from here in a way that we have not had, unless you're nerds like us and you've been watching this from its infancy, that you we have not had on a mainstream level. Yeah, there was a lot of attention for the last shuttle flight. I didn't watch it live because it's like, you know, it's, it's, we've been launching shuttles for 30 years. So I was like, all right. Um, there was a lot of attention on that. The last time I remember being kind of really riveted to the screen. I mean, I remember watching, uh, I think it was Curiosity when they did that with the Sky Crane. That was cool. When they Sojourner, the rover, landed in yep. 1997. That was pretty cool. That was a really sweet moment. The first, the first shuttle launch was cool, 1981. Um, if you're old enough to remember the most horrific school assembly ever in 1986, um, that's where kids were gathered around the country into auditoriums to watch TV screens where they were going to put a teacher into space. Oh, geez. And, and it's one of those things like, Brian, have you noticed like <clears throat> a lot of people don't talk about that. People don't talk about the worst school assembly ever that was shared collectively across every school kid of that age. You know, people just don't sort of it's like, oh, yeah. You yeah, know, I like... I didn't see it live when it happened, so I didn't see the the melt. The, like I heard about it. I guess it's like the JFK assassination. You just you know somebody came in and and told the story, and then you went home and watched Tom Brokaw explain explain the tragedy. Was the way I experienced it. I well, if you're a kid in Florida and went yeah. to school, <laughs> oh boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyhow, um, <laughs> we're gonna turn off the TV now, kids. <laughs> like what <laughs> happened? Hey. Let's go to recess. Recess. Double lunch. Um, uh, and you can use whatever swear word you want. It's fine. Yeah, it's a special day. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think as far as events like this has gotten, this is this felt like the most zeitgeisty kind of thing. And I think that we're watching this thing move. When astronauts go on there, go on board the crew capsules and both Boeing and SpaceX's, that'll be big. It'll be exciting. But it'll look like old school rockets to a degree. So it'll be like, oh, cool. All right. Then, yay. We're doing this. When the BFR starts testing, we're watching that big Falcon spaceship, just watching that test and launch from a launch pad and go up and then come back down. That will look like rockets. That will look like the future. I think that's going to be an exciting moment because then you're going to see the size of this thing and it's going to be, you know, yeah, overwhelming. Hey, man, uh, I know you uh, uh, have a hard out. Do you want to you want to jump into picks real quick? Yeah, let's jump into picks. What, what you got, Andrew? Me, my pick is I on the airplane. Uh, uh, one, I had a delightful conversation, by the way, on the way back with a gentleman who was uh, actually South African, South African businessman, owned a bunch of different companies and stuff, and it was just a you know kind of a neat, neat, neat conversation about what happened and sort of remarking upon how cool things are today and age. But on the way to, the way to uh, Florida for the launch, 
I played the uh, the game, and it's the room, uh, the puzzle game, the puzzle box um, room. Which one is it called? Uh, Sins of the Past. Uh, room, the room, old, old sins. sins, right? Um, which is, I guess, the fourth one. Um, fantastic! I loved it. It's a puzzle thing. Really, really cool puzzles. I thought it was very clear. I think the one before it, I was like, I'm like, I don't quite know if I get the storyline, and I'm a little confused here. This one was a very, very cool puzzler. They did really clever stuff. Beautiful visuals. Great, great soundtrack. Whatever. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Was like five bucks, whatever. Great, well, well, well spent. So, um, yeah, those that's my great. pick. Awesome. Uh, that is awesome. Uh, I got two picks. I watched uh, a s- stupid and futile gesture. Was that in? Oh, cool. Uh, uh, yeah, great. I really liked it. I mean, I'm a huge fan of David Wayne's work. I love Will Forte. Uh, 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 you know, and then reading more. I had not seen the documentary, uh, but but reading more about uh, the the situation in that life. I went in totally uh, clean, and uh, uh, I don't want to give stuff away, but uh, I was I was uh, thoroughly it, engrossed by the ending. There's um, a, yeah, there, there's a, a, an acknowledged plot device that uh, surprised me as well when I when I saw that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but, yes. Me too, and and, it, and it's funny because there's a conversation I have after we said it where I'm like, I had this whole moment of, huh, why is blank, 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 and then, nah, I'm wrong, and then <laughs> watching the whole thing, and then, you know. And you're like, oh, well, now, now that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. It, was, it like, was just this. What's that, Justin? I was like, man, the National Lampoon guy was on Roseanne? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like I, I did. I just assumed it was like that. That was uh, uh, that. That was the thing, and it wasn't until I, I read about m- more, more about it that I kind of got the fuller picture. It is so fun and and such a great kind of uh, take it take chances sort of biopic uh, that is uh, seemingly very true to the life uh, of of Doug Kenny, and uh, was just just so fun and just also just uh, such a great time to see. Uh, uh, so many talented actors do their impressions of other insanely famous people. Just steering into the skid of like, well, what are we going to do? Have new actors pretend to be these famous comedy icons at the height of their popularity doing the bits that they were doing? And it's like, yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. So uh, go ahead. Uh, 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 oh God, who was the guy who played Chevy Chase? Uh, 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 the soup. Um, Joel, Joel McHale. Yeah, Joel McHale. Joel McHale. Yeah, no, no, Joel McHale. Just do your best Chevy Chase impression, like one of the most iconic, like comedic icons of all time. Uh, so that was that was great. And the other uh, one is I watched the first episode of Altered Carbon, which I'm very curious to see where it goes. But man, that show is just like. You know, like some sci-fi shows are like, oh, this is like about stuff. And this is really like this could be like Battlestar Galactica. That could be on a submarine. Right. This one is just like sci-fi on sci-fi on sci-fi on (laughs) sci-fi. It's just a seven layer dip. And I don't know if it has any nutritional value, but if you like sci-fi tropes, like, uh, guess what? You are getting all of them at once. Yeah, man, uh, it's uh, the whole time. It felt like the living realization of a Peter F. Hamilton novel. I mean, it was it was uh, uh, I really like the world that they created. I like the depth and the strange nooks and crannies uh, that they that they were putting in the idea that we follow an artificially intelligent bot of, of Edgar Allan Poe as he as he argues with other AIs around the poker table about his merits and demerits. I mean, it's it amazing. Yeah, I've only seen the first episode. So yeah, I mean, it's it's like the opening scene of the second episode. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I know. Yeah, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, no, it's uh, I liked I liked what I saw, but definitely it is more on the like sp- uh, uh, space gunray man and the hidden dimensions of Mars kind of like pulp sci-fi. Hey man, I got a self-serving pick. We've got daily articles every single weekday at themodernrogue.com. The, uh, they're stuff that hopefully will make you the most interesting person in the room. You'll learn about uh, everything from uh, five ridiculous cyber crimes you won't believe were pulled off 
to uh, uh, my favorite uh, was on Friday, this ridiculous secrets from the uh, CIA's handbook of trickery and deception. I read it like uh, 15 years ago and I generally liked it. It was interesting to see a magician who was being paid to teach how to slip Mickey's and do sleight of hand to poison people to the CIA. But in this article, uh, our intrepid researchers picked out the stuff that is dumb as garbage in that book. And it's, uh, it's really fun to, to read. Uh, I think you guys are going to love them. We, uh, we're going to start banging the drum really hard on all of the content on there. But, but I didn't want to start doing that until we had enough content to show off. And now with a, a couple dozen articles, there's lots to enjoy at themodernrogue.com. Awesome. And it's not too late for Valentine's Day to get a gift certificate if you want. To for what? Modern Rogue. For, 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 oh, modern rogue. oh, of course, of course, yes, yes. That lovely uh, tradition of get a get a lock scam pick. stuff. I mean, the scam stuff gift certificate. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, uh, this has been fun, uh, and uh, let's do this all again next week. Oh, Bryce, do you have any picks? Oh, uh, real quick, I went and saw I Tanya on Saturday night. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, I did not know the story of Tanya Harding or Nancy Kerrigan. Oh wow! Much at all. You didn't live through that. That's amazing. Yeah, and uh, so it was interesting to see that. And uh, I, Margot Robbie was fantastic. It, all, She's great. All of, all of the players were really great. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go see it now before it gets out of theaters. I Tanya is awesome. Wonderful. Gentlemen, I was actually just looking at the Bigelow Aerospace, looking at their inflatable habitats and stuff. I'm like, oh, cool. Now we can launch these. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, it's been weird. Uh, no after things. I got to run. I suck. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Have a good one, man. Do that. Bye. 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 All right. Now we can well. tell them how great after things was. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess if there's no after things, yeah, we'll just call yeah, it no, that's early. that works out well for me because I've got, uh, I still have to watch both of the shows I promised to watch. Um, Oops. Yeah, I it's got both of them started, but um, I also have to do the show prep, and so yeah. we'll see you guys. Later I'm interested on. to see how you like Counterpart. This week. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the first third in, and you know, as a divide, you know, I'm a big fan of, you know somebody pretending to be somebody else and fumbling their way through it so yeah i'm enjoying it all right cool well that's coming up you doing anything later today justin you got any streams people should keep an eye out for uh the, uh no nothing else today but tomorrow uh the big day unfriend me and uh night attack and oh we have mikey at night attack we have right? mikey newman coming back on night attack tomorrow on night attack all right so uh tell your friends Please tell your friends about yeah. this show. Uh, alrighty. We'll see you guys uh, later. See you, see you, see you. Peace.